Former Representative Katie Hill loses a lawsuit against the Daily Mail. You know the Daily Mail. They do a lot of news coverage. Sometimes they get a little bit you know, into the, some of the tabloid stuff. And sometimes they do some really good, hard news reporting. And they inquire and hold our elected officials accountable. That's what happened here in this Representative Katie Hill case. So if you recall this, there was a big scandal that was developing some time ago, back in 2019. And there were allegations that she, as a representative, as an elected congressperson in the United States, in our federal house, she was doing a lot of inappropriate stuff in her role in that job. Daily Mail talked about it. They uncovered a lot of this stuff, published it out to the world as a news agency does. And she was not happy about that. Miss Hill was not. So she sued them because she didn't want to hear about it. She wanted to silence them, right? This is a, a, trying to dissuade people from talk negatively about you. And a federal, no, not a federal court, a state judge by the name of Yolanda Orozco said, sorry, Miss Hill, your lawsuit, get out of here. It's dismissed. We don't even want it in here. You're a public person. You're a compelling public figure. This is a compelling public interest. It's protected by the First Amendment. So let's go through this story. This is, once again, posted by the Daily Mail. They posted this with a big sort of victorious feeling. You can just feel the author of this. Disgraced rep Katie Hill loses the lawsuit against the Daily Mail over an article that exposed her thruple with a campaign staffer after the judge rules that the stories were of public interest and protected by the First Amendment, which is good news, right? This is, you know, listen. Ordinarily, I would not like to try to, you know, kind of dive into this woman's sexual history or sexual past. I don't, you know, it kind of feels icky when you have to do some of that stuff. Done it with a little bit with the Hunter Biden, done it, you know, a little bit talking about Hill the first go round. But this woman is trying to silence her critics who are criticizing her conduct, her official conduct as a, an elected government official, which is so reprehensible. We have to talk about it because this should not be happening. If you're going to avail yourself of public office in this country, you open yourself up to scrutiny. Unfortunately, in America, that involves some of your sex life. And if you're gonna be doing this inappropriate stuff in the performance of your congressional duties, we get to comment about it, we get to talk about it, and you don't get to sue people who talk about it because you breach your oath, your obligation and your duty to your constituents and to this country. And you don't get to suddenly turn around and sue people who want to expose that. So we're going to go through this today. Here is Katie Hill. Now an LA judge ruled against former representative Katie Hill on Wednesday, finding that the stories were of compelling public interest. Hill 33. She filed a lawsuit against her ex-husband, Kenneth Hesself and the DailyMail.com and conservative news site Red State in December. So she's trying to shut everybody up. The suit alleged both media publications conspired to and distributed intimate images of Hill without her consent in October 2019. Daily Mail did publish text and photographs that showed Hill had been in a thruple, which means three people, with her then-husband and 22-year-old staffer Morgan Desjardins. The photos included a nude picture of Hill holding a bong and with a tattoo of an iron cross resembling a Nazi symbol on her bikini line. Hill accused Hellsep of sharing her nude photos with media outlets in an act of retaliation after she ended their relationship. This, this, the couple quietly settled their divorce in October 2020, a year after Hill was forced to resign over the scandal. That's a lot going on here for Katie. Disgraced former congresswoman has lost the lawsuit. Judge handed down a verdict on Wednesday. Los Angeles Judge Yolanda Orozco threw out the case, finding that the stories about her were of compelling public interest. In her ruling, the judge said the arguments, the Hill's arguments were unpersuasive. We're going to go through that article in a minute. Text and photographs, I'm sorry, that opinion in a minute. Published by the Daily Mail in October 2019. Shocking photos of Congresswoman Hill are revealed showing off a Nazi-era tattoo. Right, and so this was back from November 1 of 2019. This is the original story, it looks like. Updated October 24th and updated November 1st, 2019. Posing nudes on wife sharing sites. She's been seen in a series of shocking photographs obtained by the Daily Mail, pictured kissing, brushing her young female staffer's hair. Her young female staffer's hair worked in Congress. As Morgan Desjardins, 22-year-old, began a thruple with her husband. They revealed... Uh, that it was steamy at first, but then Hill left them high and dry. Smoking a bong, bikini line, already saw that there is, they, they posted Hill's naked photos online in 2016 under a thread called Would You F My Wife and Wife Sharing. They began their three-way relationship 
with the married couple shortly after they started working for Hill in 2017. Affair broke down 2019. Congresswoman, who was 33, was pictured naked brushing her hair during a trip, uh, the, the, the girlfriend's hair, the thruples hair. During a trip, the three took to Alaska, allegedly funded using campaign finances. So not only are they going to Alaska where they don't, they, you know, they're not representatives there, but uh, this must be the other woman. In December last year, Daily Mail published allegations by Hill's ex-husband that she had sex with three of her staffers, had been involved in another thruple before Jardines, and used campaign donations for a, quote, sexcation and drank and smoked marijuana excessively while serving as a member of Congress. <laughs> uh, you know, I was never going to run for Congress, but that doesn't sound half bad. A little sexcation going on? Not with, look, not with any Congress people. No, no, thanks. I'm still out of that game. So Heslip also claimed that a restraining order Hill had taken out against him was an attempt to gag him from speaking to the media. Later that month, Hill sued the publisher of Daily Mail news site Red State, a journalist for the site and Hill's ex-husband, claiming that naked photographs of her included in the stories were a revenge vendetta. So on Wednesday, Orozco ruled that they were an unlawful, and I want to show you this, unlawful strategic lawsuit against public participation. So this is called a slap S right here, strategic lawsuit against public participation, citing a law to encourage free speech about matters of public concern, including politicians, without the chilling effects of fearing costly lawsuits. So strategic lawsuit against public participation, slap. It's the name of it. And this is the, this is the idea that there are certain people in this country who have no intention of winning a lawsuit, but they will sue the hell out of you knowing that you cannot defend yourself, knowing that you don't have the resources, the money to fund a defense. So you have a congressperson like this who doesn't like what your website said about them, suing red state, suing daily mail, suing her ex-husband. And the intention here is not that she's going to win the lawsuit, but it's to silence them. Right. Or this is the idea behind these slap statutes and what these laws want to protect is that from happening. They don't want people with a bunch of money to come in and just start suing people as a mechanism to keep them from saying things that are otherwise protected. So here, if she's suing the Daily Mail, what's the reason? Well, she doesn't like what they're talking about. So the end goal is to get a uh, retraction, get them to remove it from their website, issue an apology or even maybe monetary damages. Maybe she wants some compensation for this. They defamed her. They made this, you know, a, a difficult thing. They forced her retirement. She's not going to be able to collect the public salary anymore. Lost a lot of opportunities. Probably not going to be a consultant. All because they put out this information. So she's suing them to shut them up, to create this chilling effect. So there are laws on the books say so you can't do that. You can't just go file people, uh, file lawsuits against people who otherwise have a protected free speech right and the ability to go speak about these issues. You're trying to chill their ability to do that. Not going to allow that to happen. So the judge then is walking us through this analysis. And so let's take a look at what we have here. Nude images were published in the public interest. We have this Los Angeles Superior Court Judge Yolanda Orozco said the photo spoke to Hill's character and qualifications for office which she left in October of 2019, less than one year into her first term. Mail's website published the pic of the three-way relationships and the Health Ex Ethics Committee launched a probe. So Oresco in this lawsuit or in this order wrote, here, the intimate images published by the Daily Mail spoke to Hill's character and qualifications of her position as they allegedly depicted Hill with a campaign staffer whom she was alleged to have had a sexual affair with and appeared to show Hill using a then illegal drug and displaying a tattoo that was controversial because it resembled a white supremacy symbol that had become an issue during her congressional campaign. So that is in the order. Accordingly, the images were a matter of public issue and public interest, cited the First Amendment, saying this is what journalism is all about. Judge cited First Amendment grounds. Ex-husband Kenny Helseth published the image. This, the rest of this is back pay. Hill will now have to pay the attorney's fees for losing the motion, something her lawyer said could bankrupt the former lawmaker. Judge replied, not a lot I can do about it. Some of our laws have harsh results. Shouldn't have sued him. 
Yeah, you got to own that stuff, you know. So you're a public figure. You've, uh, you've availed yourself of this scrutiny. Now that you're being scrutinized, you want to sue everybody and shut them up? No, doesn't work that way. So let me show you how this works. This is the special motion to strike that was filed by the Daily Mail. So the Daily Mail, there was a hearing, looks like yesterday on March 7th. On December 22nd, 2020, Hill filed this action against the defendants, Daily Mail, Joseph Messina, Mail, all these other people, Salem Media, and does one through 50. They're asserting causes of action based on these four claims. Action based on the civil code, violate another civil uh, civil conspiracy code, intentional infliction of emotional distress, and action based on the business professional code section against the Daily Mail and Salem Media. So here's the standard then, right? There's, there's rules of civil procedure that exist that say, governing anti-slap motions. In pertinent part, this is what it says, a cause of action against a person arising from any act of that person in furtherance of the person's right of petition or free speech under the U.S. Constitution in connection with the public issue shall be subject to a special motion to strike unless the court determines that the plaintiff has established there is a probability that the plaintiff will prevail on the claim. All right, so that's complicated. What does that mean? This means that this under this law, if somebody is bringing a lawsuit against somebody else, and that lawsuit is specifically attacking that other party's ability to participate, or as, as this says, their right of petition or free speech under the Constitution. So here we have to ask ourselves, what is the lawsuit addressing? What is it trying to curtail or stop or limit? Here, obviously, if we're talking about the Daily Mail and Salem Media, it's the publication of news, which is something that the First Amendment obviously protects, right? It's, it's freedom of expression and freedom of the press. And we talk about that all the time. So this is trying to impinge on that very fundamental right in this country. And so the statute says, well, you are entitled, if you're the recipient of that lawsuit, you're entitled to this benefit. You can submit what's called a motion to strike under the provisions of the California law. And if you do that, then the only way that this lawsuit can continue forward against you is if the plaintiff, so in this case, this would be Ms. Hill, is able to show that there is a probability that they that she will prevail on the claim. Probability she will prevail on the claim. An anti-slap motion, like a conventional motion to strike, may be used to attack parts of account as pleaded. The purpose of the statute is to identify and dispose of lawsuits brought to chill the valid exercise of a litigant's constitutional right of petition or free speech. Courts go through a two-step motion to evaluate anti-slap motions. First, to invoke the protections, they must show that the challenged lawsuit arises from a protected activity, which we know, yes, right, there is here, which is the ability to publish journalism, news articles. You got to show that it's within the scope of the First Amendment. It is then up to the plaintiff to rebut the presumption. So, so once you show this, once you show it is a protected activity, you must presume the purpose of the action of the lawsuit was to chill the defendant's exercise of that First Amendment right. So then it is then up to the plaintiff. So once Daily Mail showed, hey, no, it's journalism. We're allowed to journalist. We're, we're, we're allowed to journalize over here, right? This is protected under the First Amendment. Then the burden goes back over to Miss Hill. Now she's got to show, hey, hey, look, I know it's protected, but there's still a probability that we can win this thing because of what they did, because of the type of conduct that they engaged in. So then determining whether the plaintiff carried this burden, the court considers the pleadings, supporting and opposing affidavits, and the facts and then it does its analysis. And so we're not going to go through this whole thing. We basically just covered it. Defendant wants judicial notice of all of this stuff. So the articles, of course, the Mail Online article, press release from the House, House Committee, Congressional Campaign Service, blah, blah, blah. Evidentiary objections, discussion. Defendants move to strike the plaintiff's entire complaint as an unlawful slap, which is an infringement on their constitutional rights. And then they go through the analysis. So the first question, was this a protected activity? Is what the Daily Mail did a protected activity? They say yes, right? And they go through this analysis. They're citing a bunch of law, and we're not going to go through all of it. Subdivision E, four separate categories of an act which call, qualify for treatment. We've got a lot of stuff going on here. We're going through the California Supreme Court. They're doing analysis. We're looking at a California appellate court case, Simmons Bauer Media Group. All look a lot of quotes, a lot of quotes. Then we get some application. So this is all the rule part of 
what the court is flushing out. Remember, we talk about this issue, rule, analysis, and conclusion. All of this looks like a lot of rules. Okay, see these quotes and citations? Rule, another rule, another rule. What are the rules? Here's another one. All right, so now let's do some application. Applies plaintiff's claims against it because of a plaintiff's claim arise from content, publication on the mail, Daily Mail website, public forum. Defendant argues that the article reported on sexual liaisons a plaintiff reportedly had with a young campaign aide and with an officer. Her conduct was the subject of a House ethics investigation. They contend over this. Uh, uh, this was all public. Plaintiff says, all right, we're not going to go through all this because there's a lot here. But basically what the court is saying, yes, this is protected activity. The first prong that we talked about over here is met. Then we move on. Second prong, what is the probability of success on the merits? Can Miss Hill succeed? Again, more rules, lot, lot of rules. Public concern exception, they're going through a public concern, like a public safety exception. Second cause of action, they go through all the fourth cause of action. Then finally, conclusion down here. Based on the foregoing, the court finds the defendant has prevailed on the second prong as to the fourth cause of action. Defendant's special motion to strike is granted as to the fourth cause of action. And so you'll see here, moving parties to give notice, defendant's special motion to strike is granted in its entirety. So the court goes through its analysis and says, nope, you're not allowed to sue him for that. And you got to pay attorney's fees for it. Should have never brought it. This was protected speech. You get penalized for doing so. Very good outcome. And I'm happy to see that that happened. Tim McD says, any thoughts when the unconstitutional lawsuits will start? So I'm not real sure what, um, what you're going for there. Unconstitutional lawsuits. I don't know. There really should be no unconstitutional lawsuits. Hopefully should be a basis in that because we still have the constitution, but, uh, I'm happy to answer your question. If I know what you're talking about, Tim, I apologize that I'm lost. Maybe it's, maybe I'm just missing it. We have Sarah Smothers says, can Katie Hill be sued by the people of her state for using taxpayer dollars to go on sexcations? Yeah. So, you know, I think she could uh, theoretically be charged with a crime for that, right? I'm sure there's some sort of misappropriation statute that exists in California, right? If you're taking it for campaign uh, funds for campaigning and you're going on sexcations, uh, yeah, maybe that's a misappropriation of funds and maybe they investigator and charger with a crime for that. I don't know. Joe Snow says, I saw Florida introducing a bill criminalizing the enforcement of federal laws, including the imposition of tax stamps, like for NFA items, transferable machine guns, silencers, and SBRs. What? Is Florida cool with me just making a suppressor and not registering it? Can I move there and make a machine gun if this passes? <laughs> I don't know, Joe. I don't know. I don't practice in Florida, but let me know. Let me know what you find out because that sounds like a good time. Move to Florida, hang out with Ron DeSantis, don't wear masks. Make machine guns. Oh, Amen. Count me in on that one. And those questions, again, came over from watching the watchers.locals.com. And we appreciate your support. Thanks for asking great questions today. And if you want to support the show, that's the place to do it. And so that's what we've got today. I want to thank everybody who submitted their questions on Locals and everybody who did not. These are all the great people who support us over there. Big thanks to Miss Faith Joy and, of course, to Ma Fox. Ma had a couple questions today. Thank you, Ma. We have Hack Consulting, who's usually around, Chris Owen. We've got Cats59, Jamie Boyd. Want to say hi to Drag. And we have Echo House over here. We got See the Veil, who's usually around. We got Danger Mouse in real life, Jeff Flankston. Want to say hi to some new people who signed up last night. Welcome. Welcome to the community. We have Ian from Oz1. Ian from Oz1. Freddie Bastiat. Welcome to the crew. We got Patriot Musk in the house. Is that Elon? We got Baron Sky. Welcome, Baron Sky. And then yesterday, big hello again to Mr. Zeus, Michelenko, Rob Frowley, Justice First, Deep State, Geek Dumb, and all of the others. Thank you so much for supporting us. It really means the world to us. You know, YouTube demonetized us. And we had our 30-day reapplication. I did that back on March 5th. They said, you're going to hear from us in 30 days. It's been 30 days. Hello, YouTube. Hello, where are you? We're waiting. But they have said, I asked them on Twitter, they're telling us that it's in a queue somewhere and somebody's going to look to it at some point. So in the meantime, uh, we're, we're really appreciative of those of you who are taking that little extra step, going over to locals.com and supporting us. And we're not going to forget about you, right? We are that that is we're really sort of transitioning 
away from some of this, this, the, these platforms that are doing what they can to make sure that we can't talk about the things that we think are most important. We're seeing a lot of people getting thrown off, a lot of videos being deleted, even from reputable government officials that are talking about things like you know, viruses and things like elections and things like controversial issues that are very important that make up part of the national conversation, but they don't want you to talk about it, at least from one perspective. And so we're trying to build a little bit of a community on a, on a different platform. And I know that takes time. I know that there, you know, it's not as active as a Facebook or as a Twitter or as a YouTube. And I still think it's just that important that we start thinking about maybe congregating with other people who are more predisposed to free speech than some of these other platforms. And so every time you sign up, every time you go over there, you're being a part of that. You're building that with us. And so I'm just grateful for you and for your support. And it means the world to me. And so thank you again to all of you who are doing so. If you have not signed up already, the place to do it is at watchingthewatchers.locals.com. Not only do you get to ask questions during the show, but you can also download all of this stuff. So you get a free copy of my book. There's a PDF that's over there. This is really for people who've been charged with crimes but there is a bit of an introductory section about me and a little bit about, about my life. We also post the slides over there. So those are gonna be available for you to download. Everything I went through today, you can go and download those. You can also get a copy of my impeachment party template, which we use to impeach Chuck Schumer and Kamala Harris. Hypothetically, of course, right? It was We were having fun with that, having some jokes, but it was fun. We also have my existence system, which is available for free to download this whole template if you want. It is also coming out as a course and that's gonna be available very, very soon. We have links and conversation that people share throughout the day, and the real reason to be over there is all of the great people. Very, very good community of individuals who I think have their priorities in order about what is important in this country, and not just in this country, in our lives as real people in this world. And so I wanna thank all of you. Watchingthewatchers.locals.com is the place to do it. And lastly, before we get out of here, I gotta remind you that I am a criminal defense attorney, which means I help good people who have been charged with crimes to find safety, clarity, and hope in their cases and in their futures. And so if you happen to know anybody who's been charged with a crime in the state of Arizona, we would be honored and humbled if you sent them our direction so that we had the opportunity to help them. We help with a lot. It can be a DUI, a domestic violence, a misdemeanor, a felony, doesn't matter. Can be a new current active case, can be an old case. If you have an old warrant that you want to quash, if you have an old conviction you want to clear up so that you can apply and, and go uh, restore your rights, so you can go vote again or possess a firearm. If you want to possess a firearm before executive order Joe Biden eliminates them all, there's things that we can do to help with that. And so if you know anybody, we would truly be honored that you send them our way. We'll take very good care of them. We'll make sure that they leave better than they found us. And that's it for me, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. We're going to be back tomorrow to wrap up the week, last day of the Derek Chauvin trial. Hopefully, Eric Nelson gets a little bit of sleep tonight, comes back ready to rock and roll tomorrow because I know we have some new witnesses, some pretty big witnesses, I think, are forthcoming. So thanks again. Everybody sleep well tonight. Have a nice, lovely dinner, and I will see you right back here tomorrow. Bye-bye.